Hi, and welcome to School of Hustle. I'm your host, Sarah, and this is the show where we chat with everyday entrepreneurs about everything that goes into starting a new venture. New York City is known for modern, high-end, and chic everything from fashion to furniture. And today's guest knows a lot about that as the owner of four furniture stores in the city. Nikki Chang is the co-founder of Caligaris NYC, a furniture and lifestyle design shop with four New York locations. Caligaris is a 97-year-old Italian brand headquartered in Italy that offers high quality and sophisticated luxury furniture at an affordable price point. Nikki, welcome to the show. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Are you uh, calling us from Caligaris location in New York? Yes, I'm actually at my um, 18th Street location on in Chelsea. Let's. What was the first brand that you that you founded or that you bought? So, okay, let's start there. Um, in 2003, we uh, opened our first store. Uh, which is Bow Concept. And uh, that was, uh, what, 17 years ago? So we opened our first store on 30th and Madison. And at that time, that's, you know how that street is, Furniture Street right now on 30th, from 30th to yeah. uh, 34th. Yeah. We, are the first, we are the first store there. Wow, so you kind of started that district, really. It used to be a carpet, rocks. And now it's furniture. All it's furniture because uh, yeah, we started it first. We got that space Trend because setters <laughs> <laughs> by chance, by luck. Uh, we live on Thirty Second in Madison. We used to live there, and uh, at that time, that was the only rent that we can we could afford. Um, the the building who decided to rent it to us at a very low price is because uh, they probably saw potential from us and yeah. and believed in us. And, um, and we had a good tenure there, 10 years total. And then um, at that point, did you open other locations or did you move out of that store? We opened location through that. And I, I think two years after the first store, we have our second store uh, on 18th Street, which is this one. And uh, in, I think by 2012, we mm -hmm. have nine stores. I lost count, but uh, wow, um, <laughs> must be nice. <laughs> it's just snowballing because you know once you get one going, uh -huh. it it is really just is copy and paste. But um, little did we know, uh, the bigger it gets, the less connection we have with our staff. Right, um, you know, because you, you can't have... be everywhere. It's impossible. Yeah, and I, I remember. We used to have a store in Long Island, and um, and bef before I went there it was before I was pregnant with my son. Mm -hmm. And I remember bringing my son to the store when he was a couple months old. And then and then they asked me when was the last time you were here. I'm like just recently. And then I thought, oh my god, <laughs> it's more than a year ago. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow. You know, so, so it's, it's, it, it's time flies when you're busy expanding your business so fast. So at that point, did you own Calig Caligaris or was it no. only so only when did that concept. come in? So let's like go chronologically here. Uh, you started in 2003 2000, with Bo Concept. In 2017, we gave up Bo Concept. OK. And did you own did you own any of Caligaris at that point? No, they didn't allow us. Oh, okay. So it was really so, just Bo Concept for the first yeah. 15 years or 14. Yeah, basically my, my career is really Bo Concept. Gotcha. That's okay. why people really see me. Okay. And did you name Bo Concept? Is that fully your brand you started from complete scratch? Uh, Bo Concept is a, is, a, uh, is a brand from Denmark. And so how did you do that? Did you reach out to them? Was this kind of like a um, franchise situation? When I first came here, right, mm -hmm. I was um, I I I was a coach at and I was a a, a waitress, and I and like I many have, New Yorkers, we just start as waiters. <laughs> well, the worst is I hardly speak English. Really? So that was like yeah, it was it was uh, it was very difficult because you know you know if you work as a coach at, you don't really have to talk. 
Yeah. So if you if you if you know the the menu in a restaurant well enough, you just have to memorize the menu. You know, like you really don't have to talk. Right. Um, you just um, need basic like what you would just you need like? to work hard. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, at that time, this is like over 20 years ago, you know, when you make $200 cash a day is a lot of money, you know, and, and I was like, oh my God, you know, but, um, but then back home in Malaysia, I have um, a, uh, architecture degree and, uh, and I came here for a year in to go to Parson for interior design. So then even after that, even, you know, I have no problem reading or understanding people telling me, mm-hmm. you know, when they're speaking in English, but I have problem communicating. Uh, yeah. And I didn't know until I got fired in a restaurant industry. Oh. Because when you talk to real people, you're like, I can't, I don't know, you know, like, you yeah, know, I don't know what to say. Like, you yeah, had a I know specific... what I want to say, but I just couldn't do it, you know, like yeah. I just couldn't communicate. So then I went to Baroque for English classes. I literally got fired in a restaurant because I was a bad waitress. And uh, <laughs> you know I mean, what? It's important to myself. know your strengths, and your strengths yeah. are in <laughs> furniture. So you're really succeeding there. <laughs> when I decided to look for a real job, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I went to many interior design firms, but no one really, no one hired me. Um, why do you think that is because of the language barrier i think it's a mix of language barrier and also i didn't have the experience so i i um at that time i was uh, dating my husband and he 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 lived on a 32nd in madison and he goes um why don't you uh sell furniture on 30th and park and i said oh my god this is beneath me I, this is, you know, interior designer, architect, do not sell furniture. Oh, yeah. And he goes, yeah. And he goes, but you just got fired in a restaurant. Right. And I'm like, wow, you're right. So then um, I walked into the interview. Mm-hmm. Um, I just walked into a furniture store in 30th and, um, and Park at that time. Um, and I walked in and uh, I had my portfolio and I was confident and I looked good. And I, I didn't set up an interview. I just walked in and I saw my ex-boss and I said, I'm looking for a job. And he goes, we didn't say much. And he goes, you're hired. Wow. And I'm like, you don't want to look at my um, resume or my yeah. portfolio? He goes, no, you're pretty. <laughs> wow. I was so mad. Yeah, because it's like I have so much experience. It's more than just how I look. I guess yes. I totally get yes. it. I was like, no, he didn't say that. Yeah. Right. So then he was like, by the way, is it, you know, I um you can call it a job, but it's uh it's all commission. You have no base, you get five percent of whatever you sell. I was like, this guy is really something, okay? So I, yes, it was a crazy, I I was like, but I had no choice. You know, it's either that or- or Right, or not have any money, really. Yeah, because at that time, I already went to many interviews that, you know, like no one hired me. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna give this a try. Yeah. So I asked him, how much do people sell monthly? You have three staff right now. Mm-hmm. Your furniture is crap. Uh, the selection is just not making sense. But how much do people sell a month? So mm-hmm. he told me around 60000 to to 100000 a month. So I figured 5% of that is 3000 and up a month. That is more than working in a restaurant. So then I'm like, huh. The first month I did 60000 Wow. Yeah. First and he couldn't time believe too. it. First time yes, ever this doing is, this. With, yes, with, this is a 19, uh, 2009, uh, no, no, 1999. Wow. So I, uh, and, and then the second month I did over 100,000. Wow. So I'm like, you know what? This is so easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy because you're good at it. <laughs> I think you have really good taste and you were able to like direct people with what what vision they had for their apartment really easily. And that's why you have such beautiful collections today. 
Yeah, thank you, thank you. So, but but you know, he he taught me a lot. You know, he says, uh, you know, like, you know, how to sell, how to like, um, uh, communicating with 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 customers, walking customers, how to you know um, upsell. There's a lot of things that he helped me. And so, at what point did you realize why am I working for someone else? I should just do this myself. Well, that came in when I realized what. New York City is lacking. Uh, uh, like I, I sold from catalogs, even though we we changed a lot in the in the old in the showroom, mm -hmm. and I I realized that th this is early two thousand, right? There is no um, modern furniture store that is mid price range in New York City. Zero. Where do they buy furniture, right? Okay. And they're in the late like mid 20s 30s and that group of people mid price range modern furniture was lacking in new york city who would have thought right so then i found um a bow concept in a magazine mm -hmm. metropolitan home the sofa was a thousand and up you know with, with like really good looks and all that and and you know i at that time, when we first opened the store, it was it was hard because the logistic was a mess up because yeah. they were very young as a franchise and we were very young as a franchise. Mm -hmm. um, um, and everything was made in Europe and it takes four months to get delivery. And, you know, it's many, many challenges uh, at the beginning of the, the, the journey to when we started Bo Concept. So this was in 2003, you opened Bo Concept. And at what point did you open the next location of Bo Concept? Like how quick was that process? Two years. Okay. And eventually you said you got to nine locations by 2017? Seven stores by the time we switch from, Caligar from Bo Concept to Caligaris. So but the reason you stopped working with Bo Concept in Manhattan at least was just because they didn't allow you to carry other brands besides Bo Concept, right? That was one of the reasons. Another reason is logistic issues, um, and um, uh, they moved their logistic um, um, warehouse to the west. Um, we're not able to stop as much. Furniture. So those two issues are things that you addressed in the furniture stores that you opened after that fact, right? Yes. Yes. But uh, yeah, but uh, you know, um, but then we realized that. Um, um, retail furniture industry have many challenges. And some uh, of the challenges share them. I mean, obviously delivery. I mean, time. waiting time is the biggest challenge, yeah. right? And because now, you know, um, Caligaris is, is a great brand to work with. The, 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 uh, the quality is great. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but then there's, I have many competitors now. Switching brand in my late in my 40s is actually harder than starting a new brand in my 20s and why do you think that is i think we didn't think that um people buy brands we thought people just buy furniture we kept our location and really switched the brand almost overnight gotcha you went from and, the concept to caligaris yeah because the because people walk in and say um, why is it so different? So we, we would try to convince them this is better, higher quality, uh -huh. made in Italy, but people still don't, they, you know, it, it's hard to convince people on something they have already know. So yeah, it took us, it really took us three years to relaunch. Before the pandemic in uh, uh, February this year, we finally hit our goal and oh. reach what I really want to, you know, achieve. But then the um, pandemic happened in March. Right. So, um, and how have you guys year, been dealing with that? A lot, almost every business I've spoken to on School of Hustle has, has experienced a decrease in sales uh, of various levels. Um, and it's been really challenging. Have you experienced um, similar? Similar. Um, yes and no. Uh, in in many ways, um, uh, selling higher end 
friend mm-hmm. save us. Really? Um, yeah. Wow. I feel like rich people just continue to be rich or richer. <laughs> Yeah, so can you talk a little bit about your marketing strategy that you've been using since Caligaris isn't as well known as Bo Concept? We we hardly advertise. It's really worth a mouth. It's uh, and when you think about it, um, in the furniture industry in New York City, it's only a few big players. And to be honest, we are probably the only mom and pop shop. And that's so special, having that element because people really do want to buy uh, from mom and pop shops to support them, especially during this time. Yeah, that's my, uh, that's why, that's the line I use to close sales, you know, like I would say, you know, I would give them my cell number to like, you, you know, text me if there's any problem with the deliveries. Like, like, you know, people who work with me, they have been with me for over 10 years. You know, my delivery team has been with me. So it sounds like you're a extremely talented salesperson. Would you mind giving some tips for the listeners and viewers out there on how to be an amazing salesperson? Because what you just said right there, I think, goes the extra mile. And that's a great example. Uh, well, first of all, thank you. Uh, I I own it. So uh, I want to say, you know, throughout all these years of uh, um, being in the furniture industry, um, I want to say you not just selling. I want to say everything you do, you do it from your heart. Like you really mean it. You know, you gain trust from a customer when you really mean it. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, when a customer show me a floor plan, I can easily stir them to buy a, the, the most expensive sofa or the biggest sofa in the living room. But I would not do that. I would make sure that the space worked for them, mm-hmm. not based on my sales number. Because that to me is more important than anything. Because when you think about it, more than half your life is your home. Imagine buying the wrong sofa and you're stuck with it for 10 years. I know I have the wrong sofa. So we're going to have to talk about <laughs> that <to> later. <laughs> I hate it so much. I tried to get rid of it in the last move. And I, <laughs> anyway, so I always, you know, go on with your so story. So I always tell my customer and my staff, I even tell my staff, you know, don't sell, don't try to sell the most expensive piece just to fulfill your sales goal, you know, sell the, the right products that fit the customer's lifestyle because at the end of the day when they trust you you really sell the whole house the whole home they come to you when they move they come to you when they have a second home they come to you when their mom buy a place the sister buy a place the neighbor so that's really the biggest this really my sales technique to gain trust from people and to do everything from you know, from your heart, like you really mean it. Same with cooking, same with practice um, yoga, same with raising kids. You know, you can just do it just to do it. You do it just because you mean it. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what anyone that is a great business person, a great salesperson uh, does. When I when I think about it, it's just about establishing trust with your customer and your clients. I heard that you work with your husband, is that true? Yes, yes. And what um, is it like working with your husband? Well, a lot of people thought, there are a lot of people think that it's really hard, but, um, but um, it's not because um, we do different things. Um, he, managed, uh, he manages the logistics, the, the back office, uh, money related uh, um, part of the business. And I deal with the showroom, uh, staff, sales, the front end of the business. Gotcha. Um, So you are kind of separated, but on a daily basis, do you communicate about the business as well? Well, I'm not going to lie. The beginning is hard. You know, we, we, uh, we fought over little things until we define, you know, the fine line uh, in, in the business where I take care of this and he takes care of that. And, and I, I don't ask or, or, um, um, or get into what he does. I don't ask 
for the detail. I really don't. And may, maybe because of that, he also doesn't ask me. Gotcha. And I, get, I guess we, we trust uh, that he's not going to do anything crazy and I, and I won't. And then my, well, our intention and our goal is the same. You know, the goal is to sell a lot of furniture, mm-hmm. you know, and, and uh, with the same goal, with just different work, you know. Right. Um, and that helps yeah. keep your relationship intact, both in a family way, but also in a business way. Yeah, yeah, we're good friends, you know, is that uh, uh, there's a, there is a great dynamic between the both of us. Um, that's his strength, you know, like managing uh, uh, customer service or logistics, that's his strength. I, I, I can't do that. You know, it, the, the, business, the business does not work uh, without one of us. So uh, it goes hand in hand. So I'm curious, do you have a favorite piece of furniture that you have in your home that you're just like, oh, this is the best thing I've ever purchased or found? And To be honest, no. <laughs> I bet your home <laughs> is beautiful. I'm so curious, like what your home looks like. It's probably the nicest home in New York City. <laughs> well, if I tell you, you will laugh. And I actually, everything I have at home is a uh, customer return. No way. <laughs> because you can't sell it anymore, right? It's either floor model that has been around for too long. Wow. Or I have a, I have a, I live in a loft. We live in a loft. So I have a lot of space. So then, or, or either the, the, the sofa is too big. I mean, we generate sales out of it in, in the showroom. And when people order it, they order smaller. So a bigger piece will not fit in most Manhattan apartment or the color is not right or the configuration is not right. And I have an open floor plan. So I would have a gigantic sofa, but I would like every once in a while, someone who's looking for a gigantic sofa, I'll sell it off my floor. You've provided so much interesting uh, history, advice, storytelling today. I want to know if there's one piece of advice that you would give to entrepreneurs, what would that be? Uh, go with your guts. Do it. You have to do it. Yes. Because um, you don't want to regret that you didn't do it. What's worse that happened if you didn't do it? You regret, right? And what's really, what happened if you didn't do it? What happened if you did it and it didn't success, succeed? You just go back to where you were, which is not bad. Exactly. Right? See, if I, if I started, if, if, if my first store didn't work, I go work for my ex boss again, wish I had fun. <laughs> and from there, I can probably work at other high end furniture stores or consult for other brands, which is not bad. I can always say I started a business and it didn't work. Right. It's an, it's an, it's an experience. So it's been wonderful having you on the show, Nikki. Thank you for joining us. And thanks to everyone who tuned in today. If you want to learn more about Nikki's businesses, you can visit caligarisnyc.com, camerichusa.com, and mcollection-home.com. And be sure to follow Nikki on Instagram at NikkiChang55. So that is all for this edition of School of Hustle. Keep up with all of our episodes on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you stream and download podcasts. And if you like what you heard, please leave a review, share with your friends, and subscribe to our show. We'll see you next time. Bye.